Welcome everybody to a new uh, video presentation on which we are going to discuss the <coughs> topic of the laterality uh, of the intraoral radiographs. And by the laterality of the intraoral radiographs, we are referring to the uh, whether uh, this radiograph belongs to the right or left side of the patient, maxilla or mandible. Uh, though this subject might be a straightforward uh, topic, is that you look at the radiograph and you know that this radiograph is located to, uh, on the right or on the left, for, for, or belongs to the right or the left side, but um, uh, uh, in some instances we might f face a difficulty, especially in the uh, pediatric teeth or in edentulous areas where uh, we, you know, sometimes uh, uh, we're, we, we're kind of lost, where are we? So in this uh, demonstration or in this video, we would uh, have an idea about the steps that we will use to standardize uh, the way that we look at the radiographs and then we will have a uh, uh, we should have no proper, uh, difficulty in uh, looking at the radiographs or locating them. Uh, there are a few steps that should be considered in, uh, when you uh, uh, think of uh, uh, locating where this radiograph belongs to. First of all, you should have a proper radiographic uh, uh, anatomy uh, knowledge of radiographic anatomy, especially in the intraoral radiographs, because without a proper anatomy, uh, we, you, we are lost. I don't know how can we locate a radiograph if the uh, anatomy is not known. For anatomical landmarks, I mean, for the teeth and for the uh, uh, maxilla and the mandible, how would they appear in the radiograph? Based on this appearance, we will know where this radiograph belongs to. Uh, second thing is that you, uh, you will discard radiographs of, of improper quality. And when we say that radiographs are of improper quality, we do not uh, encourage repetition of radiographs. Uh, on, the, uh, on the contrary, we should take each all the steps necessary to have a radiograph proper radiograph from the beat from the first instance we expose the patient uh, uh, because this is simply we are this is against the radiation protection measures for the patient but in some instances it happens that the radiographs are of a low or inferior quality and there is no point in orienting a radiograph that does not uh, have any <clears throat> diagnostic confirmation. A third thing is that uh, uh, in, 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 in uh, uh, digital radiography, the, uh, the uh, uh, sensors, when they are placed inside the oral cavity, they can make, uh, they can capture a radiograph whether they are placed in one direction or in the other direction. So you expect that you have images that are, you know, flipped uh, upside down. So uh, before you orient a radiograph, you need to or flip the radiographs according to the proper occlusal plane or to the curve of speed. Then the next step of orienting the radiograph will be uh, done. Uh, what well, after you after you correct the, or you orient the radiograph properly, you're going to locate where is the midline, or the area closest to the midline, whether it was a tooth or a structure. Say for the mandible, uh, you will start from the lower central uh, lateral canine and then you extend posteriorly. If there are no teeth, teeth available, then you will locate where is the lingual foramen, for instance, mental ridge, mental foramen, and the inferior dental canal or the external oblique ridge and so on. For the maxilla, you're going to locate where is the tooth and then you're going to go laterally <coughs> 
uh, uh, sorry, posteriorly and distally, so that you will locate where is the canine eminence, eminence for instance, inverted Y, maxillary tuberosity, zygomatic process, or process of the maxilla, and so on. So these are, that's why we all, we, we, we stress the, that you know your radiographic anatomy, which you're going to use it as a basis for orienting or your radiograph. Now, after locating the midline, you're going to draw a line, draw a line or an arrow that extends from the area closest to the midline, and then you extend it posteriorly. You draw a line from the area closest to the midline, and then you extend it posteriorly. <clears throat> if this line that you have drawn, it's an imaginary line, imaginary line. If this line that you have drawn is extended towards the left, your left, then this radiograph belongs to the right side of the patient. On the other hand, if the line that you have drawn or the arrow that you have drawn from the midline posteriorly is extending towards or directing or directed towards the right, then the image of this patient belongs to the left side. Let's have a look on these uh, as we will proceed, uh, this will be, uh, we, we will be familiar with, with this. Now, a radiograph like this one with a severe con cut, as you can see over here, uh, uh, I don't know if you can make uh, any, uh, if you're looking for the apex, okay, you can accept it. Otherwise, if you're looking for a, 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 a premolar here, there is no point of orienting this radiograph, so it's better be not done from from the from the uh, from the beginning and you should always use a sensor holder or you direct you being properly on that radiograph so that you don't end up with a concrete cut like in this case another case where you double expose your sensor double exposing the sensor it means that you're going this happens with the with the plates uh phosphor plates you put it in the patient's mouth, you forget, you don't process the image, and then you, you expose it again. You end up with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, uh, a radiograph that has been double exposed for, like as uh, we can see here, this is for the mandible and this is for the maxilla. If, you can, if we, it can be traced properly. So make sure that you, uh, when you do the exposure, please download it to your computer, then expose your uh, sensor again. An elongated image like this one with apex cutoff uh, is useless because the, here you, what you have done is that you have decreased your vertical angulation which has resulted in an elongated image. Uh, next time if you're going to do this, you, what you need to do is that you're going to increase, you need to increase your vertical angulation so that you will have a, an image that is reduced inside. Otherwise, you will end up with this case and the apex is cut off and the, uh, the radiograph is useless. Improper placement of the sensor uh, high up above the occlusal plane uh, end up, uh, uh, gives you an image like this one. Lots of area that has uh, not covered any tooth while the area that you really want which is the apex of the tooth is not shown. Uh, you better next time if you're going to repeat this, uh, uh, you will have a, you have to extend the, um, uh, your sensor more in an apical direction to avoid this problem. And you can refer back to the videos that has been done earlier or have been done earlier uh, about the uh, ways, the, 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 uh, the artifacts and the errors uh, that uh, results from improper uh, placement of the um, uh, sensor inside the oral cavity. Uh, what happens sometimes that, especially with the phosphor plates, the relatively flexible ones, the patient is going to press hard on the center of the of the of the plate, and then it is going to, uh, you know, uh, curve. Curving of the uh, of the sensor results with a with a case like this one. You see that there is a long uh, elongation plus the distortion of the image. So so you get an elongated 
plus distorted image, which is actually in these cases as they are totally uh, useless. So uh, you better have uh, you if you're going to use the place, please make sure that your sensor or your patient, when you ask him to support the sensor, not to press hard on the middle of the sensor. Otherwise, you will get you will end up with a case like this. With the sensors that are the direct sensors, the one with the cable, this does not happen. Why? Because the sensors are thick; they are not they cannot be pressed, which is, can be a plus point to those sensors. But what it happens? It it happens with the other plates, which are the sensor plates, uh, which are a bit flexible, and you will end up with the case like this. A radiograph like this one, I don't know what to say. Uh, an improper placement, low exposure time, improper coverage. You can uh, all the ex all the errors, uh, most of the errors that we uh, we would expect in in a radiograph, uh, uh, it happened here. So uh, please make sure before you expose is that you have placed your sensor correctly. You have directed your beam pro properly in order to avoid uh, re-exposing the patient to, <coughs> excuse me, to unnecessary radiation.